Hello and welcome to the stream. My name is Quinn Stone and uh, today we are working on the, let's see here, uh, we're working on a deity card for Urgothoa. Um, Urgothoa is kind of one of those not so pleasant gods, goddesses, um, but she is the one that we're going to be doing today. So let's get started with that. Uh, so we got Urgothoa. The Pallid Princess. And let's see if we can get this going. Uh, it is. Uh, let's see here. It was excess. Okay, so goddess of excess, disease, and undead. She is a neutral evil god. Uh, uh, neutral evil deity. And let's just go ahead and take these. Um, and there goes my cat scampering. I was I was debating on whether to do Zong Katun or Gator today. I don't know. I just felt like Gator was a more interesting one for today. done so we don't have to worry about them.
I need some music.
Hey, Devin Kitty. How's it going? Doing good, doing good. That's good to hear. We are doing Ergothoa today, and this is turning out a little bit creepier than I had originally intended, but you know what? That's okay. Ergothoa is a creepy individual. can maybe cover some of them up with the uh, flowers that are going to be going in.
Hello, Alpha. How's it going? How are you doing today? to hear. Ooh, you're going to be uh, running a game? What kind of game? You have a setting or anything that you're doing? Ooh, dungeon one shot. Have you DM'd before? Mostly 5e? Yeah. I will say that uh, switching from 5e to Pathfinder is a huge jump when you're when you're DMing. GMing. Personally, I, I've only done one game as a Pathfinder GM, and it was a nice surprise to, to have that switch. It was a lot easier to do. my opinion. Okay, so you did the uh, beginner box. That's that's a very good place to start. Beginner box is always a fantastic place to start on getting those foundation rules going. Experimenting with it more. Uh, so, um, if you're doing a uh, homebrew kind of thing, I do suggest something that I usually use is uh, what's it called? Mimic Fight Club. It's like Kobold Fight Club, but for Pathfinder. So it kind of does all the CR balancing. Not that Pathfinder isn't pretty good about balancing CR just by the system that it uses, but...
yeah, it's it's a pretty cool tool if you want like if you want to throw something together real quick. If like your players run into a room and it's like, ah, you know what? I want you to fight something. It'll make things interesting. It's a it's a nice little tool to just throw something together real quick. I think does PF Two Easy has something like that? I can't remember. Um. Is this on the same layer? Yes, it is. Let's, let's make that on a different layer. Eldritch, how's it going? And welcome, Jennifer. I'm Jennifer Grant. Yes, uh, five five e is a lot more work than a uh, two Pathfinder is. It's a big jump. And, and just how much prep work uh, there is. Because in, in 5e, in, in my opinion, in 5e, you just have so many moving parts that the players can kind of get into that you kind of have to just plan for everything. Hi, Mabel. Hi. Hello, kitten. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for the ADHD thing, that's kind of what the Simply PF2E comic is for. Um, I myself kind of have that issue of just, you know, you've got that big book and you're like looking at it and I'm like, I can't read this. This is way too much, too intimidating for, for someone to uh, sit down and read for some people. So that's why I'm making this.
Yeah, I agree. 5e asks a lot of the DM. And uh, players keep on getting tools and DMs don't really get that much from uh, the supplier, so... That's how it be sometimes. Thankfully, Paizo has been very kind on the uh, GMs. Because there's just so many things that they clarify that help. Yeah, there's a lot more support on the uh, subsystems. That is agreed. And personally, I like the the fact that they have so many systems clarified, like the conditions and everything. They're so clear with their rules that there's no... You don't have that game of Mother May I? When you're when you're playing some other uh, systems, and it's not just Five E, it's it's other ones that'll do that. And uh, and I mean to each their own on what system they like. Um, I've played Five E for quite a few years, and it has a place in my heart for for what it is. But you know. You are a fuss. You are an orange little fuss. Somehow Encounter Builder refused to make sense. So then you broke it down in flow chart? Yeah. I can understand that though. Yep, sometimes one way just clicks better than the other. Let's see here, we can put one right. Ow. Mabel, come on, stop. Uh, she is an orange little thing. I'm actually trying to get a picture of her. 
up on the stream. Because I don't have a camera for her, but... This is probably going to be way too big. <laughs> I need cat VTubes, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, let's see here. I need to just get a little picture of them, each of them. Because I've got a gray cat and an orange cat and a little Boston Terrier and a Roddy Lab mix. And they're all cute and sweet, except for the gray cat. He's okay. But I still love him. <laughs> I kind of have to. He's my cat. Here. This works. I'm gonna see if I can put a picture of her up. Uh, mind you, it's not the one of her right now. Right now, she's rolling around on the floor. Oh, that's big. Once again, we have very big picture. Okay, let's size that down, and you guys can enjoy a picture of Mabel. There's Mabel. There you go. Move a few things around. There you go. There's Mabel. Let's see here. Now that I've stopped looking for the at the screen for like five seconds to do that. Uh art is both simple and complete magic for me. Art is a skill that is acquired and Anyone can do it, so long as, you know, you've got the time and the the gumption to do it. I mean, it, it's just like learning to do just about anything else. It's all practicing hand-eye coordination. It's not, it's not a magical thing. But you can make some pretty cool stuff with it. Uh, the cat YouTube would be so adorable. Yeah, I need to finish my model. I'm actually having to re- do the entire thing because um, I upgraded it and I want to redo the eyes because whenever I blink, for some reason my character kind of looks angry, so I'm going to re-rig it for that. Uh... <laughs> yes, the gray, the gray one is a little low-key ugly. Uh, he, can, he can be a little bit of a uh, gargoyle sometimes. And I'm not kidding, he looks like a gargoyle when he's when he's in a mood. You've got two and one is already always interrupting you while you're doing work or stream. That's how they be. That's that's how cats be. Yes, I do need a hat, cause uh I'm working on it. It's it's in the pipeline. I'm, like I said, I'm having to kind of redo my entire rigging due to upgrade a program and stuff like that. Let's see here, we want you to go. Smoothing's too high. Hmm. Ooh, watercolor swatches. Man, I love watercolors. That is one of my favorite mediums for, like, non-digital. I actually got some Hemi gouache paints for Christmas. 
and I've been a little bit hesitant to uh, start painting with them. They're a little bit scary. It's something new, and I haven't done actual traditional painting in ooh, at least six, seven years. get there. I'll get around to it eventually. Maybe maybe this weekend, next weekend, one of the weekends. I'll just sit down and do it. Wash is fun. That's what I've heard. It's a um, for Mary Blair studies. Who's Mary Blair? I haven't heard of that one. Or maybe I have, and I just don't recognize it off the top of my head. Mary Blair. Which is oh 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 oh. Okay, no, I recognize her stuff. Yeah, I just haven't. I didn't remember the name. Oh, that's so pretty. This is like old uh, Disney stuff. Let me let me pull this up. This is, this is what you're talking about, yeah? Not that Photoshop. Come on. Yeah, yeah one of these. So she did a lot of the uh, old Disney. Disney artist who did the Peter Pan, Sleeping Beauty, etc. Yeah, I think I had, um, I remember when I was a kid, I had like these big, like, Disney storybooks that had a whole bunch of her art in it. They were, they were so old when I got rid of them because I've moved several times and I've had to kind of downsize a lot of my, my stuff, but I used to have them and I used to read them so much they were held to get together with like packing tape on the binding. <laughs> Man, I used to love those books. And then we got to school face person and that is a jarring difference. But no, the that is beautiful. That is some beautiful artwork. try and do a study of hers. That, that's a good idea. I've actually been taking and uh, gathering a lot of artists that I want to do studies of um, just to try different styles and stuff where I'm trying to get art as a major thing. Trying to get comfortable enough with it to actually start doing more. In fact, I've got a piece that I'm working on that I kind of been doing instead of stuff that's supposed to be done because the inspiration hit me and well, that's just how it is sometimes. You gotta do the thing that you see right then and there. That's gonna get in the way. one of your favorites? I kind of just googled her name to see what it, what it was, but yeah. <laughs> ADHD strikes again, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. It's been 
hitting pretty hard lately. That should do. Those don't intersect too badly. had to sneeze. <laughs> we just started getting... I walked out earlier and uh, to go to lunch. And you walk outside and everything is just covered in yellow pollen everywhere. It is crazy how much pollen is outside right now. Oh yeah, you're still in ice, aren't you, Devin Kitty? Snow mold? Snow mold? Yeah, what is the snow you speak of? Where I'm from, we have ice. <laughs> we shut down because there's ice, usually. We didn't really get ice this year, though. Is a good thing, I suppose. I mean, I'm happy that we didn't get ice, and the fact that uh, we didn't have a bunch of people driving like mad people. Hi, Mabel. 
Please don't get on top of my computer. I would really appreciate it if you didn't get on top of my computer. Thank you. You're a good kitty. Uh... You're in Texas, so you only get uh, snow when it's trying to break your fragile <laughs> your, your electric. Yeah, no, I have a I have someone that I uh, play D and D with that's from Texas, and I've heard uh, I've heard stories about how bad it can get. What? What, Mabel? Why are you doing a fuss? Imagine who taught her that every time she meows, she gets attention. Who taught her that? That's what I want to know. Probably the person giving her attention. <laughs> yes. Uh, she's a cutie. She's she's got a hold of a pencil down at my feet. She's going nuts with it. Yeah, they need that extra love and the uh, the extra brain cell that floats around between them all. She has not had a turn yet. Here, I don't know how I'm gonna do the bud. Bud's gonna be a little bit of a thing. your French kittens. I'm actually going to be taking this stream out to about 30 minutes past what I usually do. Because drawing takes a little bit long. 
and breaking that flow kind of makes it hard to get back into it. Let's see if I can save this real quick. 'Cause you had two ice storms in, within ten days. Gonna hop off. All right, you have a good one, Devin Kitty. Thanks for coming by. Really appreciate that.
Okay, I think we can start coloring. Right now we're just blocking in colors just to kind of establish what we want for everything. Ergothoa apologist? Apologist? What's, what's that mean? <laughs> be able to finish this one within the next hour or so, so we should be good on time. Uh, the thing that'll probably take the most time is the um, highlights and lowlights. Just getting all those details in. Detail work, that's what always takes the most. And I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of that in here. Apologists are people that offer defense of something controversial. Oh, okay. 
How is how is Ergothoa controversial? People in Geb love Ergothoa. It, she's a great person. She she's all about you know undead and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. I see absolutely nothing controversial about Ergothoa. Ergothoa is her own woman and does what she wants. Not even death can stop her. Yes. Uh, from what I was reading when I was going through her lore to figure out how to do her card, she uh, she was actually the f said to be one of the first undead. And she uh, she's all about just getting what she wants. necessarily a bad thing if and moderation you know but that's not her thing moderation is not her thing Christmas system is rigged. I'm sure there's plenty of people that would say that, yes.
nope, nope, not the layer I want to do that on. That's always a scary thought. Accidentally coloring on the wrong layer. I've done that. I did that to Gorum. Gorum gave me a lot of trouble. Uh, had to redo his about three times because one of those times I um, I drew on I colored on the line layer and went back to erase some of the lines and draw a few more in and it was just decimated. That's why we got the Gorum card that we have now. Uh, supposedly, she knows if you'll be coming back, which implies the future is set. She's rigged the system, and Oem was going to break it when... Arodem was going to break it, which is why Gozra trapped him in the eye of the... Abendego. Don't listen to what the gods tell you. Uh, Gorum gives a lot of people trouble. It's kind of his thing. Yep. Yep. I can believe that. He doesn't care which side wins, so long as there's a fight. And why would you- why would you ever believe the gods? They- they are... so full of themselves. You know? The only one I would probably... maybe believe is King Kalian, and that's just because he's a really cool guy. You know? I mean, his stories are all- all true, right? They're not just big fish stories. So I'm going to be right back in just like two seconds. I've got something I need to check on, but uh, give me like 
two minutes and I'll be good. All right, be right back.
right, I'm back. Oh, let's go back here. Uh, <laughs> two minutes starting now. Okay, that admittedly took a little bit longer than two minutes. I apologize. But it needed to be done. And we're going to take this and put it on another layer just to make things easier for ourselves. And then I also wanted to Is it coming over? Oh. Alright, it does look like we're on the last 20 minutes or so. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this colored in the rest of the way a little bit more so that you can at least get an idea of what's going on here. Um, background wise, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe a sickly green yellow color. Um, We can just put a stand in yellow. That's something maybe. It's giving me ideas for what I could do for the background. Maybe some like potion bubbles or something. Hello, Matthew. Welcome. How's it going, buddy? We are figuring out colors. Because colors are hard. Just fin finished work for the day. You're finally getting to enjoy your day now.
So we're coming up on the last 10 minutes or so. We're getting to a good point where it's kind of getting the picture of what we're going for. Um, I'll probably work, work on this a little bit more after the stream, so. I did want to go ahead and uh, do a quick shout out to um, something that I'm working on that seems okay for me to share. Thought you guys might enjoy it. So get this eye colored in. I'll go ahead and pull that up. But uh. James and a few others are working on a uh, mech finder right now, and I have tried several times to try and do mechs. I can't draw mechs. I can't. <laughs> they are difficult to draw. Um, at least for me. Here. Uh, but I, while I can't do mechs, I can do kaiju. And I've been working on one of the kaiju that I think he's wanting to put in there. Um, kind of works. Yeah, I'll go ahead and get that guy up. And... of a Edder Cat Kaiju that I'm working on for Mech Finder. Um, I'm pretty happy with them so far. And I'm quite happy with his line work. But I just wanted to toss that out there as like, hey, this is one of the things I'm working on. Um, yeah. So, go ahead and do some... Yeah, he's one of the things I'm working on. But, uh, I'll go ahead and wrap it up around here. Um, is this this is looking pretty good. I still need to figure out what I'm gonna do for the background. It feels like it should have something paisley. <laughs> it really does. Like old wallpaper paisley. But yeah. I think this is a good stopping point for now. Um and I will actually be taking next week off. I've had some family things come up that I need to take care of. So I will not be streaming next Tuesday or Thursday, but I will be um, back the week after. So I it simply will also not be updating next week. So um, we will be returning or I will be returning on see here so 6th through 10th not gonna be here the 13th is when I'm going to be uh, back on and doing things um, and I'll be streaming on the 14th and 16th that week 2 p.m. Eastern 2 to 4 um, and we'll continue doing more actions and conditions and stuff so yeah 
But um, thank you all for coming over, hanging out, and uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, and I believe we've got... Who is streaming tonight? I believe... Let me just go ahead and get this pulled up. Yeah, we've got Aaron with MathBinder tonight. So he will be here at 6 o'clock Eastern on the EOG channel. Um, and then it looks like, yeah. So uh, come back around uh, 6 and um, you can join Aaron in uh, working down some, whittling down some numbers for, for some of his projects. Um, and everyone here on EOG is an absolute delight to, to hang out with and stuff. So be sure to just come by any of our streams. We're all, everyone here is, is awesome to, to just hang out with and talk about nerd stuff, you know? So, um, yeah, but I'll see you the week after next. And I really do hope that everyone here has a good day and good week. And yeah, have a good one. Bye.